All right, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we'll do is insert a background image. So go up to Insert, Picture, and in your Assets folder, you should have this Washington, D.C. map image. Go ahead and select that one, or you can, of course, use one of your own. It's always a good practice to name your objects, even when you're building simple interactions like this one. So I'm just going to call this IMG dash Washington, D.C. I like to use a common prefix when I'm naming images or buttons. You can, of course, find and use your own naming convention. All right, and because this is a background image, I'm going to lock it so I don't accidentally move it or delete it. All right, so we have our image on the slide. I'm going to go ahead and close the timeline for now. Now we can go ahead and add a marker. So to add a marker, just go up to the Insert tab again, and this time select Marker. Now you can see that you have a lot of pre-built markers with icons. We're just going to use the blank one for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and click it, and then just click on the slide to add the marker. Now you notice that when I place the marker on the slide, the marker is made up of two parts, right? There's the actual marker, right, the button, and then there's the label. Now the label also has a couple parts. It has a, a, a title, which you can change, and then it has the, the body part where you can add text, pictures, or video. In this case, for this marker, we're just going to add some text. So let's go ahead and fill out our marker. And you have some placeholder text already created for you in the Assets folder, so you can just use and copy that and paste it in the label. All right, so we have some text in here. Now, in this case, I want to adjust the marker a little bit, so I'm going to play around with the layout. First thing I want to do is make the text a little larger. So I'm going to select it, and you'll notice that it opens up the text editor. So we'll just make this around 11 points. All right, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and select the title now, and I may actually make this larger as well. So you can see that all the text editing options are available, and I'll go ahead and center this. Now you'll notice that I have a lot of blank space here, right? So I can actually play around with the sizing handles a little bit and resize the label so it fits better with the text. I think the sides look okay with the margins, but I do need to reduce some of that space down here at the bottom. Now, if you go too far, right, if there's too much text for your label, you'll see the scroll bar. So I can just back off a little bit on the sizing. But if you find that you're always getting or frequently getting a lot of scroll bars with your labels, you, you may just want to think about rethink how you're adding uh, content to those markers. It's really not intended to uh, be a really uh, a place to put a large group of content. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just preview our slide to see how it looks. So go up to preview. Now we can see the marker, and it came with a subtle animation. So this is just uh, a way to indicate to learners that there's something to click on. When I roll over it, you can see the title expands. Now in this particular case, the marker is waiting for me to click it. So if I click it, there we go, I can get my information. Now one of the problems we have here is that the marker is actually covering up the image. I'm trying to show the Capitol building and the marker's label is covering that part of the image. The other thing I want to do is I want to move the marker, right? So it's a little closer to the building. I also want to do some formatting to add some contrast to this label. And we'll do that in the next tutorial.